In this video, we're going to introduce ways to represent organic molecules. Now, you've probably seen Lewis dot structures where we would have a carbon showing all of its bonds to the hydrogens around it. So this would be CH4. Or if you had a larger molecule, you might have connected several carbons and then filled in the hydrogens. And so this was CH4, and this is C3H8. Generally, when we want to draw organic molecules, we need to show you where all the atoms are. That's the idea of a Lewis structure that it let us kind of build the molecules out so that we could see which atoms were connected to which and in which order. And for smaller molecules, this isn't a huge problem. If you have formaldehyde, or if you have ethanol, but I'm sure you're knowing, noticing how much kind of dead time there is trying to draw these all out, right? They take time. They take space. There's a lot of drawing. Now this is fine for you know, CH2O or C2. H6O, but how long do you think it's going to take to draw carbon 40, hydrogen 82? That would take an enormous amount of time. Take up a huge part of the board screen. It, it's just not reasonable. And yet some of the molecules in organic chemistry can be hundreds of atoms in size. But even if they're only a dozen, that's still a lot of time and a lot of space. So we need ways to simplify our drawings. We need to be able to show the shapes they come in and the connections in a much quicker representation. And so there's a few levels that we're going to discuss. First level is just the most basic atomic or molecular formula or chemical formula, depending on where you learned it. These are, you know, like C3H8 or C4H10. Right? They're just the atoms. They don't tell you how they go together. If we think about C4H10, I could have four carbons in a line, and I could put a hydrogen off each of them. Or I could actually have three carbons in a line and a carbon off the middle carbon. And while I sped up the video slightly, that took me about 30 seconds to draw. The formula doesn't tell us which of these two options it is. In fact, they both can exist. They have different physical properties. One will boil at a different temperature. They'll freeze at different temperatures. Occasionally, there'll be different colors. Um, they will do things like burn and give off different amounts of energy, despite being exactly the same atoms. You can have C4H10 plus some amount of O2 go to CO2 and water. Despite that it's the same number of atoms going to the same number of products, you actually get different amounts of energy out depending on which of these two you used. So that structure, that shape, it is vitally important. We have to be able to represent it, which means the molecular formula isn't really all that useful for us. After molecular formula, there's these kind of Lewis structures. These are uncondensed drawings or full drawings. They show every atom and they show every bond. Now, sometimes you can be a little faster about it. You can shorthand. So when you had uh, four carbons in a line, you could say CH3, CH2, CH2, CH3. And for this drawing we have over here, it would be CH3, CH, CH3, CH3. You kind of get rid of the bonds unless you really have to show one going off from the straight line. 
This saves quite a bit of time. I wrote far less hydrogens. I drew far less bonds. It's a quicker way to represent things. In fact, the straight chain can be condensed even further. CH3, CH2, 2, CH3. As we read across this, it looks like a CH3 and then two separate CH2s, which we see down below. There's two separate CH2s and then a CH3 on the end. These are condensed drawings. They are just ways to simplify it down a little further. It still shows us shape in a general fashion, but it saves us having to draw all the bonds and write all the atoms. Well, while we will see some of these, there is a further, and this is skeletal. Skeletal drawings are the most common representations in organic chemistry. These make it so it is a very fast sketch. We write in very few atoms. What will happen is if you had a molecule like our four carbon chain, I want to represent this, but I want to do it as fast as possible. For this, we just draw lines. Every end point and every intersection is a carbon. Now we stagger them because if we tried to do it in a straight line, it becomes really hard to tell where on earth those carbons were. So we show them as a zigzag. And honestly, this is closer to the physical reality anyways. And so there are four carbons here, marked as green. Hydrogens that would be on carbon, we don't even write in. Since the majority of molecules, if we go look at our list up above, even when there were other atoms like oxygen, well, the carbon's filled with hydrogens. Anything that wasn't taken up by another atom was filled with hydrogen. Hydrogen is just all over organic molecules, and so we don't write them in unless they're on something other than carbon. Well, how do we know what's going on? How do we know that this is an intact structure? That How, how do we read this? We need to recognize how many bonds we expect every atom to make. Hydrogen? is one bond. If you have a carbon, we expect it to make four bonds. A nitrogen, three bonds. Oxygen, two bonds. And if you have a fluorine or a halide of any kind, one bond. In fact, everything in their columns Nitrogen and phosphorus are in the same column. We'd expect them to be three bonds. Oxygen and sulfur are in the same column. We expect them to have two. Fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, they're all in the same column. We expect them to have one. If you remember back to Lewis structures, this is how many bonds these atoms make. And so when we go and we look at this skeletal drawing, pick a different pen color here, we can look at this carbon at the bottom here. Well, it shows a single bond. That is this one going to the second carbon. It only shows that one bond. That means there must be three more. The idea of the skeletal drawing is any bond not shown to carbon must be hydrogen. The result is that if we look at our second carbon, well, it shows two bonds, one back to the first and one off to the third, which means there are two unshown bonds that must be to hydrogen. And that matches what we actually see from our, fully, our full drawing. The third carbon shows two, one going off to the fourth, one going back to the second. It must have two more. And indeed, that's what we see for our third carbon. And our end carbon on the right only shows a single bond, and so it must have three more. 
going to hydrogens, which is what we see on the right most of our full drawing. Skeletal drawings simplify what it takes to draw a molecule. It makes it much quicker to represent them because we don't have to write the carbon atoms in. We just draw a line real fast, and we don't have to put anything for the hydrogens on carbon. So we could have this one. Well, this was CH, CH3, CH3, CH3. This was our other form of four carbons and eight hydrogen or ten hydrogens. If we look at this molecule, I've got an end point. There's a carbon, there's a second, there's a third, and an intersection. That's a carbon. And so I have my four carbons. Each of these N1s only shows a single bond, so it must have three more. Those would go to hydrogen. The bottom one must have three more. And indeed, it should have three hydrogens, and this top left should have three more. And indeed, as we see from the full structure, or the slightly condensed structure, is that it has three. That middle carbon shows three bonds. One to the top right, one to the top left, one down. It needs one more bond. And indeed, it has one hydrogen. So take a second and draw the skeletal drawing for ethanol. We saw it a little bit earlier. Except this time, I've got an atom that isn't carbon. So in this case, well, I first make my carbons. So one, two carbons. And that second carbon goes to an oxygen. So we still draw a bond to it, but that bond doesn't end on a blank point. It ends on the oxygen atom. And so it is showing connection to that oxygen. The oxygen does have to show its hydrogen. We only leave hydrogens off of carbon. Every other atom, you have to show the hydrogens. Luckily, they're very rare, and so it doesn't add a lot of time. But the ones on carbon aren't meaningful most of the time. They're just there to fill in the bonds on carbon, and so we can leave them off visually. Let's give this a try. Take these two molecules, convert the skeletal drawing on the left into a semi-condensed form, and take this full drawing on the right and turn it into a skeletal drawing. Go ahead and pause and give that a try. All right, if you're back, well, on our skeletal drawing here, I've got a point of intersection on top, two on the left, one on the bottom, two on the right. There are sorry, six carbons in this drawing. So there's going to be a C, H2. It's going down to another carbon. It's going to have two hydrogens. It goes down another carbon. How do we know they have two hydrogens? We'll go back up. This top carbon shows only two bonds, one going to the right and one going to the left. There must be two more. In fact, each carbon only shows two bonds. Each must have two more to hydrogens. And so as we go around this ring of carbons, each carbon must have two hydrogens attached. This is cyclohexane. We'll talk about naming in the future. But this is how we turn our skeletal drawing into a full representation. Over here, well, I have three carbons. I have three carbons. So start to a second carbon to a third carbon. We draw them again zigzags so that things aren't in a perfect line. We need those angles so we can see the intersection. And so just for emphasis, here's my three carbons. Well, there's also an oxygen, so I have to draw my double bond to the oxygen. 
And that's it. There's no hydrogens on the oxygen this time, so I don't need to show it. And I don't need to show the hydrogens on the carbon. So this is generally how you can represent organic molecules. Full structures tend to be time consuming. We'll use them for a little while to help us see, but we will be moving into structural skeletal drawings. And so the skeletal drawings allow us to very quickly draw very large molecules without having to spend the time or the effort to put that many hydrogens and that many bonds on the molecule.